I entered an autocross event a few days ago with the C6 Corvette. I wasn't planning on doing a video. I was just there simply to enjoy the experience and have some fun. However, as the day came to a close, it became obvious to me that this event had so many really neat car guy elements that I really do need to do a video so that I can share the highlights of all of the things I had just learned and experienced. Because guys, seriously, if you have a Corvette, don't be an idiot like me and wait 10 whole years before you attend your first autocross. Toys for life. First, a quick shout out to my friend Billy. Here's one of his first runs of the day right here. About a year ago I was doing just a little bit of work to a Z06 and he informed me that he had just bought the car about nine months ago. It was his first ever sports car. It was his first ever car with a manual transmission. And then he told me he had just completed his first autocross. That hit me like a brick. Here's this guy who's about my same age. He's had the car for less than a year. He's new to Corvettes, he's new to sports cars, and he's new to manual transmissions, and he just completed his first autocross. Meanwhile, here I am. I've been into hot rods and muscle cars for decades. I've had this C5 for over 10 years, and although it's always been kind of in the back of my mind, I've competed in exactly zero autocross events. <laughs> And that was my wake up call. Since then, Billy has been extremely encouraging and has answered every question that I've had. So thanks a million, Billy. So the purpose of this video is to go through the top seven to 10 things that I learned to hopefully give you a little bit of a nudge to get off that fence as well. Number one, not all autocross tracks are the same, not even close. They can vary immensely in size and shape, and the speeds that they allow because of the format of the track can vary from 30 all the way up to probably 80 or even 90 miles an hour or so. The event that I attended was held at a local technical college on what is essentially their 2.8 mile road course. It was built for training police ambulance, emergency services, and even truck drivers. And so while many tracks are essentially just a giant parking lot with a whole bunch of cones, this track is essentially a mini road course with cones placed as obstacles so as to kind of limit your speeds to a maximum of around 60 miles per hour, which is actually pretty decent. So if you decide you want to give autocross a try, do some digging, see what's available in your area, take a look at the venue at which they hold the event so at least you know what kind of size track and layout is possible. Number two, I was impressed by the variety of cars. My event was capped at 70 cars, which is large enough to make it busy, efficient, and interesting, but not crowded. There was all kinds of cars there, including a C4 Corvette, a couple of C5s, and even another C6 in addition to mine. Other interesting cars were a Dodge Challenger. Grab out of my car, and now that I did, now I, I want to learn the line. A Tesla, a Chevy Volt, which in my mind takes the prize for the worst handling car of the day. There were a couple of really cool Toyota Supras, a Mazda RX-8, a Porsche, and several other varieties of very interesting cars. Number three, I was impressed by the variety of people that were in attendance. They ranged in age from probably 16 all the way up to 75. 
While most people were somewhere between 20 and 30, there was quite a few people there that were 40 and older as well. Most drivers were men, but there was also quite a few female drivers as well, much more so than I would typically see at the drag racing events that I've attended through the last couple of decades. It's definitely an autocrossing community that attends these events. However, like most car people I've met, I found them to be very patient, nice, knowledgeable, and welcoming. Number four, work shifts. Everybody at this event had to sign up for two one-hour work shift blocks. This is necessary to keep the cost down, and there's a lot of things to be done, like resetting cones, doing lights, and all kinds of other tasks. I chose to be a person resetting cones, which turned out to be a good idea because it was easy, but more importantly, it gave me a great close-up view of the track, allowing me to see all the cars that go through so that I can see what works well, and I could also see what works horribly. As a bonus, if you're trying to stay in shape from all the running around I did, resetting cones and whatnot, I did 14,000 steps that day, all at no extra charge. Number five, most of the footage that I've seen of autocross in the past, it looks a little bit slow and I'm sure my footage won't be much different. However, I promise you that all changes the moment you jump behind the wheel. Of course, I'm used to rapid acceleration. not the violent turning and swerving that is autocross and I have to say it's pretty awesome being able to do this in a safe environment. And even though the footage of me in the C6 is a bit underwhelming for now, as you just saw Billy is absolutely tearing up the track and he's only done this about 10 times. Number six, tire wear. Not surprisingly, autocross is probably one of the harshest activities you'll ever subject your front tires to. Corner after corner, trying to keep a 3,400 pound car on the track is definitely a physically demanding ask for soft rubber tires. So if you happen to have just spent about a grand on a brand new set of Michelin Pilot Sports for your C5 or C6, be forewarned after 25 or 30 runs on the autocross track, will get chewed up a little bit, but it's well worth it. Number seven. If you happen to have a weak stomach, then listen up. No exaggeration, scouts honor. I have the weakest stomach of anybody I've ever met. It's so bad that when my kids were little, I couldn't even swing with them without feeling ill. And so on the way to the autocross event, my biggest fear is that I would make about three runs and then I would be done. I'm happy to report back that it wasn't bad at all. And if you suffer from motion sickness, you'll probably be fine. That having been said, towards the end of the day, I got a little braver. I went for a couple of runs with Billy in the passenger seat of his car. did get to me just a little bit. Number eight, grip. Yes, I touched on this just a little bit ago, but it deserves its own talking point. I was absolutely amazed at just how fast I could take corners in the C6 without losing it. I did leave the active handling on and I felt it kick in multiple times as I slowed down too rapidly for cones or swerved a little bit too hard. This may get me flamed a little bit in the comments, but that's okay. It is my opinion that for rookie autocross drivers, active handling and anti-lock brakes will definitely make you faster. That having been said, after I get a bunch more autocross events under my belt, I look forward to seeing what my fastest times are both with and without the electronics on, because I think that would be super interesting. If you've got firsthand experience doing just this, please leave it in the comments below. Number nine, autocross racing is absolutely a boatload of fun, more so than I even imagined. Drag racing is fun as well, but autocross runs are about 40 seconds. Drag racing passes are a little over 11 seconds, give or take. So at the end of the day, autocross is a lot more thrill for your bill.
That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Now get out there and find yourselves an autocross event to enter, but first, hit that thumbs up below, subscribe so you don't miss the next video, and most of all, thanks for watching.